All right, welcome to part two of this chemisode video, and this is about ionic sorry ionic equations. Um, looking at precipitation reactions and how we can turn those into ionic equations and how we can write ionic equations for precipitation reactions. Let's get stuck straight into it. No um, dilly-dallying around. Let's go have a look at some examples. So ionic equations, um, basically they show you what a reaction would look like if we have, it only shows you what's involved in a reaction. Basically, if ions are soluble as both reactants and products, technically they don't really play a part in the reaction at all. They're kind of just hanging around watching what's going on. These ions are known as spectator ions because they are only watch the precipitate being formed. Okay, obviously I haven't done this animation very well, but let's look at the example here for potassium iodide reacting with lead nitrate to form lead iodide and potassium nitrate. Very, very common um, precipitation reaction to look at. Um, there's another video on here which actually shows you this reaction happening and explains the ionic equations as well. So have a look at that as well as this one. But what we're looking at is spectator ions. Spectator ions, as we said, are soluble as both reactants and products. Looking at this, your product here is potassium nitrate as a solution here. Nitrate is aqueous on the product side and nitrate is aqueous here on the reactant side here. You can see um, it's part of an aqueous solution. This means it's a spectator ion. Same with potassium. Potassium's aqueous on the product side and potassium's also aqueous on the reactant side. So therefore it's known as a spectator ion. Lead iodide, see how the iodide is a part of a solid? Iodide is part of aqueous, means we actually care about it. It actually does happen something does happen in the reaction for it. Because the iodide changes state, we leave it into our um, equation. What we do, take the spectator ions out. K plus and NO3 negative are aqueous on both sides of the equation, thus can be removed or taken out of the equation as spectator ions. And we re rewrite the equation, only showing the important things. That being our two iodide ions and our one lead ion. These guys react together and they form our solid. Okay, This is an ionic equation. It has our spectator ions removed. The important part, the thing about this is you know the charges for your ions. Okay, Basically there's no way of getting around it, you just need to know charges. Very very important. Alright, let's move on. Let's look at another example, or two more examples actually. We've got two things here, two reactions. One is silver nitrate, reacting with the potassium chloride. Obviously it's forming these two because our cations swap around. Um, if we want to write a ionic equation, for this we want to look at what is aqueous on both sides. Potassium, aqueous. Potassium, aqueous. So therefore potassium is going to be our spectator ion. Same with nitrate. Nitrate's aqueous here, nitrate's aqueous here. Bam! These guys are going to be your spectator ions. So we remove them from our equation and we're left with Ag plus aqueous plus Cl negative aqueous goes to AgCl. So silver ions plus chloride ions form your silver chloride as your solid. These guys are the ions which change state. Um, next up we have um, whatever this is, um, cobalt bromide and potassium sulfate. Um, what we're looking at here is obviously these are aqueous, these are aqueous. Um, our spectator ions, um, potassium definitely is aqueous on this side and aqueous on this side. Bromine or bromide is aqueous on this side. So these guys are your spectator ions. Remove this from your reaction. You're left with cobalt, 3 plus, sulfate, 2, ah, uh, should be negative always have some issues around here. Let's change that to negative. Plus, let's go, and here we go, and that forms your cobalt sulfate. Now, I knew this is three plus because bromine is always negative, so therefore I could work out what my cobalt is. Remember to remember how to look at charges, okay? I know this is three plus because bromine is negative, and I need three of those, so therefore my cobalt here must be three positive. That is ionic reactions. Okay, 
pretty straightforward as long as you understand what your keywords are, as long as you can explain what a precipitate reaction is, um, how to understand work to work out what your precipitates are, and you can understand the idea of spectator ions. Why we call them spectator ions? Because they don't take part in our reaction. And that's why we can technically remove them and only show what actually does react. It is only certain types of ions that react. Here's a summary of what we should be able to do. We should be able to predict the products of a reaction between two ionic compounds or ionic solutions. We should be able to, given two solutions, mix them together, we should be able to work out what our products are going to be. We should be able to predict if a product will be a precipitate, depending on the solubility rules. Okay, In general, potassium, sodium, um, ammonium, or ammonia, sorry, ammonium, yes, ammonium is the ion, and nitrate, these guys are your soluble ones. They'll never form precipitates if you've got potassium in it, nitrate in it, so on and so forth. You should be able to work out which ones are going to precipitate anyway. You need to be able to write full chemical equations and ionic equations for displacement reactions or for precipitate reactions. So that means you need to balance chemical equations. You need to write the full one where you're showing all the ions and you should show the ionic equation where you're only showing the ones that are important, removing the spectator ions from them. Textbook reference is 12.1 in the Heinemann 1 textbook. Textbook questions, you definitely need to do at least questions 1 and 2 and 6 to 12 where we're explaining what's going on. And there is also a worksheet on precipitation reactions that you can find on Edmodo. So please go there. If you haven't joined the Edmodo group, you can type this into um, the address bar and get to Edmodo that way. Anyway, that's it. That's finished. Um, I'm now going to go home because it's Friday night and I am done with explaining stuff. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, look forward to learning about acid and bases next up. So, there we go, finished. Mm -hmm.